you doing? Doing, I'm doing okay. So um, thank you for being on the, the podcast. And uh, kind of what, what it's about is it, it started to be just kind of about Alpa different El Pasoans. And it's kind of become a legacy piece on Coach Haskins. Okay. Um, so I want to talk to you first about a couple of, you know, the big pressing things in college basketball. One, the transfer portal. And, uh, you know, how you, how you see that affecting, you know, UTEP as well as college sports. And then the, uh, the, the players being able to receive money. How do you see those two things? Uh, yeah, obviously, um, you know, we've had a lot of change uh, in college basketball over the last couple of years. Um, I, I think, um, you know, I think there's been a lot of positive change and, and positive things that are happening and, and needed to happen. Um, obviously, we're navigating those uh, areas, I think, right now. I think we have a lot of great coaches in college basketball. I think our game of college basketball is as good as it's ever been. Um, I, I think, uh, to be quite honest with you and, and truth teller and transparent, I'm not uh, one of those coaches that's involved in those conversations. That That's for those guys that have won all the national championships. But, um, you know, I, I think we have great leadership uh, in college basketball uh, with, with our coaches that have been in this game for a long time. Um, from our angle, um, you know, we've got to accept it, in my opinion, as college coaches. Um, and we've got to embrace the change. And uh, we got to figure it out because it, it's not going anywhere. You know, uh, the portal is going to be around. Uh, for it, it's here to stay and name image likeness is a great thing for our players to take advantage of their opportunity to, uh, to make some money off their name. So uh, it, it, it's, it's hit us really hard. Uh, we lost uh, 10 players in the portal uh, last year. So we're having to bring in 10 new guys uh, year two here at UTEP. So uh, we've been in the weeds with it for sure. Uh, on the flip side of that, the portal helped us recover our roster uh, for this year. We were able to go in the transfer portal uh, and, and get some guys um, for this upcoming season that we think are going to be really good players. Um, the name, image, likeness piece, you know, we're navigating that here at UTEP. We're obviously starting to get involved with that. Um, I, I think that the Power Fives are probably ahead uh, of a lot of people at our level on that right now. Um, and, and obviously the money, uh, you know, what's, what, what's the – What's the, the price point for all this? I, I have no idea. I don't know what those Power Five schools are doing. You, you read articles and you hear rumors and hear gossip around of some of the, <laughs> the money that, that's out there. Um, but obviously, that's something that here at UTEP that we're starting to get involved in. And um, we have some people around town that, have, that are starting some collectives um, that, that will help and benefit our players. You know, obviously, as a head coach standpoint, I cannot be involved in the naming of likeness. So I'm kind of out of those conversations. Yeah. So you came to us through Abilene. And uh, one of the things doing a little research I found funny was the fact that you've got an uncle and a dad both named Joe. Yeah. So there's three of us. So my uncle uh, learned a lot about him, obviously, through the life, but he was a heck of a football player at Oklahoma and uh, still holds uh, some records there, I think, for Oklahoma football. And then uh, my dad was uh, a longtime coach, coach fo <clears throat> football, men's basketball, women's basketball. I think he even did a little softball and golf. Uh, but he just retired a couple years ago, so he's enjoying life right now. Yeah. And you did you grow up in Abilene? I did not. I grew up in Midland, Texas. Um, lived there through my sophomore year, uh, then moved to Wichita Falls my junior and senior year. Yeah. So you grew up, did you play Hobbs in high school? Yeah, Coach Tasker. We had a bunch of rivalries, him and Coach Stevenson. So uh, we would always play him twice, once at their place and once at our place. And um, it, it was a lot of fun. I, I enjoyed that rivalry. Was Toad Coach Tasker still there? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Hard, hard to beat them in Hobbs, isn't it? Yeah, we. I don't think we ever beat them in Hobbs. You know, they had the uh, the benches on the baselines, uh, yeah. so you couldn't sub, <laughs> you couldn't get to the table to sub, and you couldn't call timeout. And uh, the way they pressured the basketball and and, and obviously got after you, uh, we never won in Hobbs. We would all we we won a few times in Midland, but I, I bet if Coach Tasker was still alive, he'd tell you we cheated him. You know, the refs were were awful, but yeah, uh, those teams would probably say the same thing about Hobbs. I played at Eastwood in, in high school, and we beat Hobbs and Hobbs in the holiday tournament. They came in the locker room. They came in the locker room and took the traveling trophy from us. Instead, <laughs> instead we would not be invited back. <laughs> yeah, Coach so, they like to lose. <laughs> yeah, you know, and and talking to people around town, the thing I've heard about you is that you're embracing the the history of Texas Western. Yeah, I think that's important. You know, when I got here, uh, you know, growing up in Midland. Um, 
you know, that was, uh, that was just something that uh, you heard about a ton, you know, it was coach Haskins. He was a legend out here uh, in West Texas. If you were any type of uh, basketball player growing up, you knew about coach Haskins and what he did uh, in 1966 with a national championship gets talked about a bunch, but look at his legacy. I think he won over 700 games, you know, uh, in, in college basketball. He's in the hall of fame for a reason. He's one of the best um, coaches um, that we've ever had in our game. And so, um, just the, the history was real important to me growing up in Midland uh, and, and learning uh, about UTEP. And then obviously uh, you look at the coaches that came after Coach Haskins, Billy Gillespie, Doc Sadler, Tony Barbie, and Tim Floyd. And then obviously most recently Rodney Terry. Those are some of the best coaches uh, in our game. So, you know, just the history, the tradition of this place is just incredible. Uh, and obviously we're trying to get it back to those days. Yeah. Um, have, where'd you coach before? I was at Abilene Christian. And that's where you played, right? Right. So I played there and then I uh, had a chance to be an assistant coach there and then moved on to Arkansas Little Rock um, and then was able to come back to um, to Abilene Christian uh, and, and be the head coach. So I spent almost 20 years of my life at Abilene Christian. Wow, that's a long time. Long time. And uh, were you always looking to make a move or? No, I wasn't looking to make a move at all. You know, um, I, I think our family, uh, Abilene had became home. Uh, you know, we'd been there as a family for 10 years. Um, and then obviously I had spent, you know, almost 20 years of my life there. And so, uh, one of our kids was born there. Uh, we, you know, it, it was just, uh, you know, when the opportunity of UTEP came up, uh, you know, we've been to the NCAA tournament twice. We just beat Texas in the NCAA tournament and, um, you know, the UTEP, uh, opportunity was, um, you know, in front of us and, and we were able and fortunate enough to, to get the opportunity to, to come here. It was just too good of, too good of an opportunity to pass up. I was ready for a different challenge. I was ready for a change. Um, and I thought the timing was right for, for this job. Yeah. Well, it's on slate for this season. We're going to have a good season. Yeah. We're excited about our team. It's obviously a brand new season, uh, you know, team. We, we've got 10, uh, 10 new scholarship players, three new walk-ons. So 13 total new players in our program. Uh, we got a couple new staff members as well, um, that, that have joined us, uh, this season. So we've had a good summer. Um, we're off to a good start this fall, but uh, obviously there's a lot of work that has to be done. Um, you know, we play in an extremely tough league in Conference USA. We've got a tough non-conference schedule. So we've got a lot of work ahead of us, but I like the way we're going. How, how, uh, how have you and your family found El Paso to be? We love it. You know, um, it, it's just it's uh, got a great energy to it. Um, you know, it's a big city. Um, there's, there's a lot of things going on. It's also got a small town feel uh, to it. It seems like everybody you meet knows somebody that knows somebody that knows somebody that can connect <laughs> the roots back to, back to you. Um, the food is fantastic. Uh, like I said, the energy is fantastic. I love the way this community supports minor athletics, whether that be football, volleyball, uh, basketball. Uh, you know, the, the, the town is, is passionate about, uh, about minor athletics. They care uh, about winning and losing here. Uh, they, they, want, they want to win. Um, so um, they've embraced our families uh, from day one. My, my two sons, uh, one is a sophomore at Coronado. Uh, high school. The other one goes to uh, is a seventh grader at St. Mark's, and uh, my wife has got involved in a lot of stuff at the, uh, you know in the community and obviously at their school. So El Paso is starting to become home. We've been here over a year now. We're starting to uh, you know kind of establish some roots and get our kids involved, and my wife's getting involved, and so things are moving in the right direction. Well, that's good. Um, what would you like El Paso to know about you? <clears throat> Man, that's a good question. Um, you know, I don't know. I, I, I just think they, I hope they, they realize that, that uh, you know, uh, that we're passionate, that I'm passionate, our family's passionate about getting UTEP basketball um, back uh, to where it belongs, and that's competing for championships. You're not going to win a championship every year, uh, but we want to get this program where we're winning 20 games every year and we're competing for championships. Uh, I also want them to know that we want to be involved in the community. We're just not here. Uh, you know, kind of in our own bubble, uh, being a head coach. We, we want to establish roots in El Paso. We want to get involved in the community. We want to be involved in activities. And, you know, my, my two kids are playing youth sports. My son right now is uh, playing football at Coronado. He also plays basketball. And uh, my other son is involved in baseball and football and, and basketball as well. And, um, again, just getting involved in the community and, and uh, getting to know people and, and obviously making uh, El Paso home. Yeah. Well, Coach, um, I want to thank you for your time and uh, let you know that I'm, I'm personally happy that you're here. I think it's a it's a, a great thing for the community and for the university. And uh, let's go out and have a good season this year. I appreciate it, Doug. Thanks for your time, man. Thank you. Bye-bye.